welcome to You Are Not Alone. I am spiritual medium, Erica Gabriel. This show is intended to bring expansion, understanding, and growth on our spiritual paths and journeys. This is a safe place to explore all things spiritual and beyond. Please remember, I am not a licensed therapist or medical doctor. Seek immediate professional help if you need mental health or physical health support. Hello, friends. Welcome to You Are Not Alone. How's everybody doing? So happy to be with you today and hanging with you today. Um, I'm excited to do this episode. Um, I have a bunch of things that came up this weekend that I really want to talk about that I don't, I don't feel like we've touched on before in this way. So I'm excited to talk about those. And in the middle of this, in the middle of this recording, I'm going to go live as well on Instagram. And the reason why I'm doing that is because, well, one, you guys love lives. And two, questions come up during lives that are kind of like the hot topics in the collective. And I want to make sure if you're not someone on Instagram, you're kind of connecting with the vibration of the other people listening to this podcast. You know, a lot of people on Instagram are listening to the podcast or people that maybe are on Insta and not listening to the podcast will kind of cross over. And also it's just a lot of fun. You know what I mean? It's fun to go live because then we get to connect and kind of talk in the moment. I've done this once before and you guys loved it. So we're going to do that in a minute. But what I want to um, go into a little bit today, you know, we talk so much about spiritual development and processing spiritually and God and destiny and the other side and loved ones who've crossed over and your own intuitive voice and learning about different um, ways to connect with spirit. We talk so much about that. And that's what this podcast is about, right? Spiritual processing, information, paths, development, spiritual seeking. And there's also a component here that I think about a lot. That is this awesome place for me to sit sometimes and reflect on 16 years and thousands and thousands of readings right? So you guys know that the information that comes up here are obviously from those readings and things I have learned. Also, I'm channeling them from spirit and from spirit guides. But I mean, sitting here, watching the process of someone have a reading. Do you know what I mean? So not like this is, I've learned this from a reading, like about guides or whatever. It's like actually the human interaction of someone having the experience of sitting with their guides and letting that information in and how interesting it is to watch kind of human nature in these moments. And first of all, oh my God, we are all so alike. It's bonkers to me how alike we all are. We're so alike and we're obviously also incredibly fucking unique and different, right? But like human emotion, human connection, love, loss, regret, grief, we are so alike. We are so similar. And it's amazing to me to sit where I sit and see components of the same thing over and over and over and over again. So one area that I want to focus on, um, and this is it's interesting too. I was thinking about this this weekend. I'm like, this is almost could be taken as negative, which is like, I avoid the negativity like a plague. I mean, you guys know, you guys know, you've been listening to me for years now. I kind of avoid like the negative stuff, like the plague, right? Not like we talk about ghosts and hauntings and stuff like that, but just engaging in the more, like maybe more challenging or, or resistance side could be seen negative, but it's just kind of interesting. So I want to tell you what I've been thinking about and what came up is this idea of bullying. Sorry, that's such a trigger word. God, bullying. Okay. So let's, let's say forcing, let's talk about forcing spirit, forcing your guides, not you, but one's guides, forcing the universe, demanding answers, demanding your guides, demanding things from spirit. And that is coming up a lot uh, in readings right now. So people will come in. First of all, let me just, let me preface this, that if you say get a reading with me, I already love you. I literally fall in love with every single person I've ever read for. 
Like, how crazy is that? I, I open my heart to that person in the deepest way that I've ever experienced. And I love them, even if they hate me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't care. I see them. I feel them. I love them. I can go in and feel all their good. So I love every single person that I've read for. I will hold space with them, cry with them, be with them. You know, I go, the reason why is because what they're connecting to is spirit. Spirit is pure loving energy. It, it's, it's the greatest force on earth. It's love, it's source. So when I go in and connect with someone and source goes through me, I just feel that love for them so much. I hope that makes sense. So I'm not judging people, but I am still here as Erica. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not possessed. Um, although everything I say is coming from someone and somewhere else. So I will sit with people and, you know, they come into the reading, like a couple people will come into the reading, like this is fake. She is a faker. This is fake, fake, fake. And she's a faker. But on the 0.5% chance that she's not, I'm getting this reading. You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, hello. Nice to see you. Great. This is going to be so fun. I'm so glad that this is how it started. But people will start that way. And um, sometimes they'll even, I've had people because I read on Zoom, I've had people sit down in front of the camera and put down like on a table next to them, like four items. And they'll be like, if you can tell me the four items that are on this table, I'll believe you're real. And I'm kind of like, well, first of all, I'm not a fucking magician, dude. Like I'm not a magician. I love you, but I'm not a magician. And second of all, like I hate tests. I failed so much of school. This is so uncomfortable. I'm like, what are you doing right now? This is so awkward. You know, it can be very uncomfortable. And all of a sudden, Erica is like schwitzing over here. I'm like, oh my God, like, that's not really how I read. I'm going to open it and we have to be available to what spirit brings. You can't force them to tell you stuff. Like, I, I don't know. It doesn't work like that. I, I'm sorry. Um, and then the funny thing is, is during the reading, every single one of those items will probably come up. You know what I mean? But I, I had someone do that to me once and all of their items came up. They had, I forget what they had. They had a couple of sweet items, right? And they came, you know, they unfolded in the reading and all of them were named. And at the end they were like, so was that spirit telling me, telling you like what was on the table or were you guessing or, and I'm like, I don't know how to help you. I love you. But like, bro. All of the things on that table came up. They just didn't come up like a Q&A test, right? They didn't come up like that. So you got all your items answered, but you still don't want to believe or connect with spirit. And that's okay. Let that be okay for yourself. Say, I don't like working with dead people. I don't trust mediums. That's okay. You don't have to. There's, what is there, 4 billion people in the world? Do what feels good to you. But the more that you try and muscle with spirit, spirit needs to tell me A, B, and C now, you know, or they need to tell me these items now, or I am coming into this reading to hear from this one person. And if I don't, everything else is crap, you know, or I'm coming into this reading because they need to tell me my life's purpose right now, or this isn't worth shit. You know what I mean? And it's like, it doesn't always work like that. Spirit truly, if you're going to get an actual spiritual reading from a real, you know, someone with real ability, right? I'm not even talking about me. It could be with anyone that you're feeling drawn to, right? It's going to be an opening and a connection of energy to source, to spirit. And they will drop in with the messages that you are meant to hear that your soul can process at that time and messages that will actually serve you. So for an example, the person who brought the items on the table, there was way, way more important messages for them about healing and about their past and about some very important things that their loved ones had to say. But they, they were so, their soul was so stuck in the three dimension, which is totally fine. You know what I mean? That's okay. It's not a bad thing. But they were so focused on one thing that really they could have evolved into this reading that could actually really, really help them move forward. More so than me telling them, you know, 
their grandma's rosary was on the table, which it was, by the way. But, you know, it's like there was so much more there, but they were more into wanting tricks. And that's that's cool. But that maybe if you want to get a reading and you actually want to work with spirit, the idea is to be open to that. And then, you know, you say, gosh, be open to the reading and I have to be open or else it's, it's not going to happen for me. And it, it, it's not true at all. You know, you can hear things in a reading and go, no, thanks. I didn't like it. I don't want that message. Like this is your reading. You're in charge, you know, and that's with anything. Say you're going to get Reiki and, you know, the person starts working on you and you just don't feel a good vibe. Just say, no, oh, this isn't for me. I'm not going to open myself up to that energy. This doesn't feel good. You're in charge, you know? Um, so you don't have to believe everything you hear in a reading, but there has to be some available energy. So that that's kind of been coming up. So people will try to force something to happen in a reading. And they're so focused on one thing that they're totally closed off to anything, any other beautiful magic, right? That will happen for them from the reading. Also, the thing that gets really sad is that sometimes someone's loved one will come in and they just, no, I didn't want to talk to him. I want to talk to her. And it's like this person is there with their whole spirit wanting to connect and bring messages. And they're just like, no, that's not who I came to talk to. And you're like, oh, man. Um, so forcing readings can be really, really tough, guys. It's, it's really, if it's a true, authentic connection reading, you cannot force, push, manage, bully your guides into doing what you want them to do and saying what you want them to say. There has to be an openness. Um, and then it's like, well, why do you have people ask questions? You know, And it's like, you know what? The questions are there. You have an entire dynamic, beautiful, incredible, winding, flowing life with millions of things that your guides could talk about. And they will bring forward the main focus things that they want to bring forward to you. The questions are there to help focus the reading into some areas that you're hoping to connect on. So there, you know, you can say, hey, you know, uh, one of my questions is for, you know, some guidance in my work or, you know, you're focusing on one of your kids that you have five kids and you really want to hone in and, and ask spirit and ask your guides about one of your children. You know what I mean? Things like that. It's like, yes, we can work with spirit, of course. But you can't bully spirit into giving you an answer. If you ask a question in a reading and I don't hear an answer, I'll be like, I, I don't know. I cannot fill in any blanks. So then the other thing that's interesting right now is this idea of demanding your guides to show themselves. So it's like, I want to know who my guides are. I want to know how they want to connect with me. I want to know what they look like. And I want to know what their names are. <laughs> and listen. I have had readings where a guide is like, hey, I'm Bill, you know, I wear a white sweater or whatever. I have. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have had that. But 90% of the time, your guides are saying, you must get to know me. Bypassing us, building our relationship will not serve you. When you get off a reading, say, say someone said, okay, your you know, guide's name is Mary and, you know, she is, I, I don't know, Scandinavian, right? And you're like, oh, cool, great. You get off the phone. You still don't know her. You still haven't connected with her. You went to end result, right? So you're still going to have to work on your relationship with your guide and how you communicate and what they feel like and how you sense them. You know, you can get end result answers as much as you want, but you're still going to have to walk the path. And that's why sometimes the guides or spirit doesn't give us the answers we quote, think we must have, right? Or sometimes it's like, tell me the name and location and timing of the person that I'm going to meet, that I'm going to marry. And while they can give you much information surrounding that, sometimes it, they don't give you an end result. They tell you the things that are maybe blocking your path right now. You have to be open to hear that. So that comes up. Oh, yeah. So I wrote a few things down. That's why I'm pausing here. But, you know, what's interesting, too, is as sitting here with all these people is like sometimes I can see the realization come across people's faces that their guides and spirit want to talk about something that they really didn't think that they were going to have to hear about. You know what I mean? So like, say, I'll give an example. Say they came to talk about their work and something else and their guides start talking about like what happened when they were nine 
And then the realization just comes over that person's face like, oh, fuck, this is going to go really deep and actually start to unlock uh, the door to my true path and my actual inner healing, which will actually bring me the answers I'm seeking instead of someone telling me the answer, which I can't even walk towards because my path is so blocked. So my guides are actually going in and helping me unlock that door. So they're taking me to a painful time. What the fuck did I just sign up for? <laughs> that happens a whole heck of a lot. Happens a lot. So the idea before you get a reading, and I will say this, I also, there are readings that are extremely different than that and are very, um, I don't want to say light, but just different. I mean, I've had readings where an entire 45 minutes is just talking to one person in spirit. I've had readings, you know, that were just all about their path and moving and uh, buying a home and meeting someone, you know, there's all different kinds of readings, but there must be some kind of willingness and openness to vibe with spirit and what spirit wants to bring to you whether it's exactly this detailed thing you thought you were going to hear. Um, so that's coming up. And I thought about all this because I got a comment from someone in Instagram um, and I wanted to read it to you. I did let her know that I would be sharing it anonymous, anonymously. Um, so we'll backtrack a little bit. So I shared a reel and on this reel, it was basically this guy who had been traveling the country for many, many months. And he traveled because his parents were um, addicts. I'm going to tell this wrong. I can repost it. Um, I don't want to watch it right now. I have it, but I don't want to watch it because it's going to be like kind of long and a, a awkward silence here. But basically he traveled to amazing sites and places because he didn't have a relationship with his parents. They were addicts and they would try and get better for him and then they couldn't and he was taken from them. And it was this beautiful reel and all these pictures of, um, you know, him on these incredible trips and journeys. And then in it, he said that he was able to come connect with his dad. Um, his dad had written him every day for a year and texted him. And he finally came together with his dad and they had a lot of amazing experiences together and were able to kind of bring some healing between them. And the reason why his dad had been reaching out is because he was dying. So he had a few months of healing with his dad and then his dad crossed over. So I posted that reel, R-E-E-L, you know, on, on Instagram and someone that I had read for, um, responded and wrote me and I want to read you that. Thank you for sharing this reel. I was estranged from my dad for two decades until my spirit guides told me in one of my readings with you that I needed to forgive him. I thought I had, and I didn't know what that looked like until I decided to speak to him again. We had some great conversations until he died nearly a year later. I never thought I'd say this, but I miss him. And I'm grateful for the wisdom that came out of my reading with you that helped me reconnect with him before it was too late. That's the message she sent me. So I can't recall. So I don't know if you guys know this. I know some of you do from previous um, podcasts, but I disconnect from readings. So after I give a reading, I completely let it go. I unplug from it. I disconnect from it and I give it to the person that I read for. So of course, I don't remember giving this reading, but that could have been a point in her reading where her guides told her about forgiveness, where she's like, yeah, this sucks. You know what I mean? I've already done that. Bye. Stop telling me that, you know, but instead she looked at it again and it completely changed her life. So things may come up that you really don't want to hear. And they're not saying it to be annoying. You're actually paying me to tell for them to tell it to me, for me to tell it to you. You actually bought these messages, you know, and I know that seems crass, but it's true. You, you wanted to hear that message so badly that you, you know, you said, okay, I'm going to invest in this. You're investing in yourself. You're investing in these messages. These messages are not just out there for shits and giggles. Your guides aren't working with you just for fucking whatever. They're doing it because they want to serve you. They want to help. They really, really want to help. And it's not for Erica to micromanage the messages. And it's not for Erica to be responsible for how you take them. You asked me to give you these messages. We made an exchange, right? In exchange, I'm giving you these messages. I'm with you. I'm devoting my life to being able to give you these messages. You booked this session. Listen to what your guides are saying. It's probably not what you thought you were going to hear and probably not what you think you need to hear or what you want to hear. And that's okay. Take a chance to listen to what your guides say. That would be my biggest recommendation going into a reading. 
I have people write me years after readings. I thought you were crazy. I didn't like my messages. Now everything makes sense. I'm told I'm, I'm like rereading my notes. It all makes sense. So listen, this is not to say every reading I give is the fucking perfect thing in the whole world. Of course not. You guys know me better than that. But I am speaking to you guys who are my friends, who you write me all the time that you trust me. And I trust you too. And, and I just want you to have this because I want you to think about that idea of surrendering and being available to spirit when you call spirit. Maybe you're calling spirit in your meditation. Maybe you're calling spirit in your church or your temple, or maybe you're calling spirit when you go for a walk in nature, or maybe you're calling spirit to speak through me, whatever it may be. If you call, be ready to hear the answer. And it may not be exactly what you thought. Now, what's interesting too, is sometimes I give readings and the person's like, oh my God, I literally knew every single thing you just said. <laughs> you know what I mean? I literally knew that you validated everything. God bless you. Thank you. Sayonara, you know? So it, there are all kinds of experiences, but this focus was really taking a chance to connect with your guides for real, not just for tricks and see how that feels. This was a wild one. Is everyone with me? Is everyone with me? There was something else I wanted to tell you about readings. Oh, yeah, there's something else. Okay, guys. So what I'm thinking now is um, I'm going to go live, live on Instagram, live, live, live. It's not going to be a super long live. Uh, I just want to see if there's any questions that I get really drawn to that I think will help the collective here today. So I hope you guys are down. Let's go live. I feel like so high tech right now. I'm going to have the live going. I have the, the podcast going. I've got two cameras. Uh, if you know me as Erica, you know I am not technical, but this feels pretty damn technical. It's exciting. All right. So let's go live. Three, two, one. And then it says you are now live. So hang with me for a second um, as people start to join and, uh, and we'll see what kind of questions they have. You know, I also want to tell you guys, podcasters that are listening, if you have a question that you want me to answer on the podcast, you can always write me, you can DM me on Instagram, or you can always email me and I will work on answering it. So people are starting to join. Hi guys. So as you can tell, I'm going live and I'm also currently recording a podcast. We just, um, you'll hear this tomorrow. So we basically... I went on, hi, hi from Germany. I went on, we were talking a lot about um, being available and opening, open to spirit and not trying to kind of manhandle. Is that like, does that cancel me? I said manhandle. I guess that's not something you're supposed to say anymore. Oh God, this is really live because now this is on Instagram and this is on, uh, on a podcast. So if I say something wrong, I'm doubly effed. You know what I mean? Um, hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. So if you're just joining, I am doing a live podcast as well as this live. Um, I was podcasting, let's see, the podcast, it was about 20 minutes, and then I just went straight to live, and it's still recording the podcast. So anyone who's on the podcast, thanks for hanging with me if you uh, stuck around this long. The reason why I wanted to go live is because so much is happening. So much is happening. Oh my goodness. Are you guys tired? Is anyone tired? I mean, my son who is, good to see you two friends. My son who's 10 hasn't napped. I mean, did he ever nap? He was a horrible sleeper. He literally like, he was like acting really weird yesterday. And I'm like, what is going on with him? Like, what is his situation today? And I'm just looking at him. I'm like, is he tired? <laughs> you know, he has so much energy. He's a 10 year old boy. I'm like, he's tired. I put an eye mask on him and put him in his bed and he slept from like three to four fifteen. He's not sick. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm exhausted. Yes. So anyone who's listening on the podcast, everyone on the live is saying that they're exhausted, exhausted, exhausted. So if you're listening on the podcast, um, you know, you're not alone, no pun intended, but people are worn out. People are tired. There's a lot going on energetically. There's ways to combat that. Um, a lot of it is just acknowledging yourself. You know what I mean? Like not saying like, it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Let's just keep going, you know, and it is going to be fine and you are okay, but you need to, to take a minute and get some, get some rest. So, um, Instagram friends, write in any questions that you would think would serve everyone live right now on Instagram and that you think would serve, um, our friends on, on, uh, on podcast right now as well. And what's cool is everyone on Instagram will be able to hear 
these questions again or share the podcast. So it's all kind of a, a cool crossover. I know a lot of people that um, are on a lot of people that are on Instagram listen to my podcast and vice versa. But some of you guys, this isn't a crossover. So I love this. So hello, Instagram. Hello, podcast. So write any questions that you have um, in the comments on Instagram and especially ones that you think would serve the collective. And I'm going to answer as many as I can before I go and do more readings. Cool. So yeah, so people are, oh gosh, this is such a big topic right now. I mean, obviously, right? Such a big topic. Love, 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 love. Oh my goodness. Everyone wants love. Isn't that, a, isn't that surprising? It's like, no, it's beautiful. That is one of the greatest healing forces in the world is love. God is love. Love is all there is really. I mean, think about even people that cross over, even ones that maybe you had strain or struggle or strife with. It's like when they cross over, you can, you can connect with that peace that you did love them. You know, you, you could always go back to that. Love is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um, the other thing I want to say about love, and, and I'll get closer to your question, my friend who wrote in, the other thing I want to say about love, and you guys keep writing in questions, um, the other thing about love is people have been told over and over and over again, you need to fully love yourself and heal yourself before you can love anyone else or anyone else can love you. And I'm like, bullshit. That is such bullshit to me. Listen, you have to be available. If you're so tied up in past relationships and you're so, you know, maybe you're traumatized by past relationships, you're stuck in loops of beliefs about yourself because of a past relationship. Yeah, it's going to be really, really hard to, to bring someone else in. That being said, love is the greatest healing force on the freaking planet. You can't make someone else heal you, but engaging in that beautiful feeling of love and devotion and acceptance, so many things do work out and heal. I had just a shitload, a basket full of issues when I met my husband. I still had to deal with them, but some of them, like think of the issues as like bubbles, like little bubbles. Some of them he popped, you know, some of them he popped. Does this make sense? Are you guys still with me? Um, yes, you guys are with me. You can hear me. Good. Because I'm recording on all kinds of areas here. Um, so that's the idea with love, you guys. It's like, it is so healing. And what you want to chase right now and what you're going to fight for right now is getting yourself to a place where the past relationships and the misbeliefs you have about yourself because of these past relationships, for whatever reason, you focus on that and aligning yourself with who you really are. And as you do that, you start to elevate your energy and elevate your vibration and elevate how you feel about yourself and how you feel about the world. And when you elevate like a freaking cork floating, guess what? Guess who's up there? the person you actually want to be with. You'll see different people in the elevation. You'll find different people as you elevate. Again, in no way possible is me are me and my guides telling you you have to be freaking perfect to find love. I just, it's wrong. I hate that. Can you tell? I hate it. Um, but if you are in a karmic rut with love, you're finding the same person over and over and over again. It's like, why? You're stuck in that rut. It means you have to move through that rut so you can meet different kinds of people. Does this help? Please don't get discouraged. The person said she's discouraged. Don't get discouraged. It's going to waste your time. Refocus on realigning yourself with your truth, what you want, and go from there. Okay, cool. Does that resonate? Are y'all, you, you feeling what I'm putting down? Okay, so someone asked, how do you know what your talents are? Feeling so lost after selling my massage practice. Yeah, that's a big one. Well, first of all, there's a couple things. Um, you are so talented. I'm just looking at this woman's name, Christine. You are so talented and you have so many talents. And, you know, you're searching to monetize those talents. So what happens is it's like, I want to use this, but I need to make money for it. And that's a lot of pressure, right? A lot of pressure. So your guides want you to think about what 
you like to do if you had a couple million dollars and you had all the time in the world? And then your mind's like, yeah, but I don't. So thanks. Bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? But just think about this. It's just, they're just thoughts. Don't, don't worry too much. Just, just think about this. If I had all the time in the world and all the money in the world, what do I think I would do? And you had to work. You couldn't say I'd buy an island and just chill, right? You'd have to work. And may, hey, maybe it would be on an island selling shirts. I have no idea. But the idea is, what does your soul actually like to do? So let me give you an example. Say you like to play with puppies, right? Okay, so you may not be able to play with puppies and support your life, but maybe you can find ways to play with puppies on the weekends. You volunteer, you help, you foster dogs, you do whatever. And and your actual money job doesn't become so soul crushing because you're like, I'm doing this so I can continue to support the other things that my soul wants. Sometimes our job becomes the main thing and it's, it's like, God, I don't like this job, but this is my main thing. It's like, then think about what are the other things I love and like to do. And I'm going to start doing them, even if it's not going to be my financial bread and butter. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, you're amazing. Everything you told me two years ago in the reading is manifested all within the last two years. I can't thank you enough. Okay. Thank you so much for saying that. And Danny F98, listen to this podcast tomorrow. You will die. Not really, but you know what I mean? You will metaphorically like, oh my God, kind of die, right? Here's why. The whole beginning part of this podcast and the people on the podcast, my podcasters listening know, was about actually being open to readings, processing readings, and not trying to micromanage or demand or bully spirit into telling you what you want to hear. It's about actually being available to processing what your guides bring you. So you know, what you just said that, you know, everything that happened in the reading now it's taken two years to manifest everything, but it all makes sense. That's literally what we talked about in the podcast. So thank you for that feedback. It makes me keep going. It makes me keep going. Good. So I'm just going down, um, and working with these questions. So if I'm like not talking for a second, just give me a minute, just stare at my face, listen to my voice. Um, Someone asked me, what are my views on Buddhism and spirituality? So are you saying like, what are my views on Buddhism and religion? Or I don't quite know. I mean, listen, I actually um, am basically all religions. <laughs> I know that sounds like I like on the next HBO, the guru who felt that she was all religion. Right. So first of all, I'm not a guru, but it's like, it sounds very like I am everything. I am everyone. I'm not trying to sound like that. Um, and you guys know me better than that, but just being totally honest, I truly am all religions. I spent a long time looking into religions. I've spent a tremendous amount of time looking into cults. I've spent a lot of time looking into gurus. I mean, this is what I look at. Um, and there are Buddhist practices and ideas, ideologies, beliefs that resonate in my soul, like in harmony deeply. So I think Buddhism is beautiful. Um, there are many, many things and many different religions that resonate deeply in my spirit. I literally believe I am all religions. If that makes any sense, I know it's weird. Um, but for me personally, also, um, half of my family is Jewish. So that has a different connection to me than other religions because um, of the history of Judaism, Judaism as, as a people feeling part of this incredible community. I mean, there's, there's a lot in all of this. And, and there's things about the Jewish religion that I just, oh my God, resonate so deeply. There's also things about Jesus as a healer that resonates with me very deeply. So I'm, I'm in with all the religions. Yeah. And I love Buddhism. It's absolutely beautiful. But every time I go like, you know what, maybe I should take my kids to church, you know, or like, you know what, maybe I should take my kids to temple and they can start learning Hebrew. Or you know what, maybe I'm going to take my kids to a Buddhist meditation center. It's like everything in my spirit stops me. I just can't do it because I love it all. And I believe it all. And I just can't, I cannot align with a roadmap to God. I can't. It's just not in me, but that that's me. 
So when I see someone that's devout, like a devout Christian or devout, uh, whatever it may be, I'm like, wow, like devotion to me is beautiful. I love it. I respect them. I see them. I love them. It's no judgment. I just, I can't, I cannot follow guidelines to God. I can't do it. It just, it's, I get stopped every single time. Uh, does that answer your question? <laughs> that was a long one. How are my podcasters doing? Um, good. And then they responded that they're feeling a strong connection to Buddhism. Yeah. So do I. Amazing. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So, um, someone's asking about regrets. Um, man, like regrets, like, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done that. I mean, yeah, it's like, that is like the absolute human experience. I've never met anyone that didn't have just a boatload or a little basket or like a little backpack of regrets that they have, right? That whole shoulda, woulda, coulda, and all of that. And I think the thing is, is like, sometimes because we have those regrets, we are stuck there. We just hold our feet to the, that fire every single day. You know, it's like, God, I, I just, I blew that shot or I, I quit school or I quit you know, this job that could have been something great, or I, I broke up with that person and I broke their heart. And now I realize I wanted to be with them. It's like, we just basically then tra- re-traumatize ourselves every single day. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I do it. I do it with certain things that I'm working through. And it's like, there are paths that we can take. There are windy roads. There are sliding glass doors. That was my last podcast. There are two different paths we can take. It's not always a straight line. We have to believe that we chose to do the things we did with the tools that we had at that time. We made decisions with the tools that we had at that time. We made decisions where where our soul was at at those times. And so, so much of the time when we have regrets, it's really shame. We're ashamed of ourselves or we're mad at ourselves. And it's finding ways to get back on your team because my God, guys, you need you. I need me. You need you. We have to get back on our team. That is where I was at that time. I did the best I could with the tools that I had at that time. And then we go, well, why was I in such a bad place? And then the mind wants to go because that person fucked me over and it's their fault. So don't do that. Don't blame anybody else. Does anyone else do that? Because I do. So no judgment, but don't do that. Take responsibility for yourself, work on forgiveness and move forward. And it's a journey. It is such a journey. Um, Okay. Feel that my past ancestors are constantly trying to guide me. Well, that's beautiful. I feel them sometimes. Does this mean I have a gift? Listen, everyone is gifted and you may, we'd have to obviously go deeper into the things you're experiencing, but just on a broader scale, it's like everyone is connected to their ancestors. Every single person. Everyone can work with spirit. Everyone can see through the veil, whether we do or what levels we do or what that means for us. That's a totally different story. So everyone can connect with their ancestors, not just a chosen few. And if you're connecting with them, that is beautiful. Say thank you. Yes. And keep going. Um, Good. Does that all make sense? Um, Someone asked me, Let's do like one or two more. I'm so glad you guys were on here today. I hope this one is serving you. You know, it's interesting with lives and going on podcasts as well. It's like just sometimes just being in the energy of acknowledgement that there is more to this life, that there are guides, that there are angels, that there are messages, that we're all in this together. Sometimes just being in the energy being in the energy lifts us up, right? Even if you didn't get a question answered or maybe, you know, not every single thing totally resonated with you, you know, it's like just being in the energy can be really, really helpful. I'm going back. Okay. How do you know when it's time to, when it's time to leave? When do you know it's the right time to go? So here's the thing about knowing about timing. So much of timing is very clear to us. It's very, very clear to us actually but we get stopped by fear. Fear blocks us and that's okay. You really can only go like you're saying, G-O, go, when your soul and your mind and your body are all aligned with that go, right? So don't force yourself to do something that your soul isn't processing at that time, 
right? There has to be a level of saying, I am confident that this time is right. And if you don't feel that, then give yourself some time to process and to align with what you truly want in your soul and in your heart. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this live. Podcasters, don't go away because I'm going to wrap up the podcast in a different way. Um, Oh, wait, really quickly. uh, I have to go. But really quickly, someone is asking to describe the quote, new earth that I'm seeing everywhere. What and when is it? So I don't know. I don't know at all. (laughs) I'm seeing this too. Like we're entering a new earth, new earth. Listen, since the beginning of time, we as humans go through shifts, right? I mean, look at the 60s. Now we're like, oh, the 60s, peace. But like, think about that. Like the president was shot in the street. You know what I mean? People were, there was uprisings, like the civil rights movement, like, whoa. Can you imagine being alive then? You're like growing up in the 50s, like, you know what I mean? Listen, there was pain then too, but I'm just saying that all of a sudden the 60s hit, whoa, this is a new earth, a new awakening. You know what I mean? So throughout our humanity, there have been new earths and new awakenings. So don't get sensationalized with, don't get wrapped up in sensationalization. Is that a word? Sensationalization? Don't, don't, if it doesn't feel good, just pull back from that and say, you know what? We have gone through shifts since the beginning of time and we are going through an elevation and a shift, right? And during these elevations, the darkness gets really strong as does the light. So don't, don't scare yourself or sensationalize it into being afraid or scared because that can kind of really fuck with your energy. Does everyone feel me on that? Like, you hear all these things like we are entering like a new earth and hey, that sounds cool if it's for the better, but that can also sound really, really scary. So focus on your own path, your own awareness, your own wakening up, your own love, your own forgiveness of yourself, your own path, your own life. And say, as I do that, I contribute positively to this new energy that's coming into the world. If that helps feel more um, safer in control. Um, okay, live people. I love you. I love you. Thank you. And stick with me more and more to come. Okay. Podcast friends, podcast friends. You're my podcast friends. I love you. Thank you for hanging out with me. I know it can be weird to switch from just me talking to you, me talking to lots of other people, but at the end of the day, regardless of how clunky sometimes things can be getting these messages out, getting this connection, that's what's important. So if there's something here today that served you, I literally filled my entire soul's purpose, really. And I love you all. And I really, really deeply appreciate that you trust me uh, to, to be able to kind of hang with me and hear these messages. You're all beautiful, beautiful people. Please share my podcast. Please comment on Apple so I can keep going here, guys. You know, and at the end of the day, if you take nothing else from this, please take that you are not alone. You are loved. I love you. God bless you. And take good care, friends.